Good afternoon, everyone. Good to see you all. Um, we just had conversations with coaches where they stressed the conversation is not about winning a championship. Uh, Stewie, I remember talking to you back in 2018, and you said, if we're not here to win a championship, um, why are we even here? And I just, I just w sort of wonder for you and really for all three, uh, Sav and JJ as well, how you balance those two things about, you know, as Sandy says, winning the day with the type of expectations I know you, hold, you all hold yourselves up to. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's a, a fine line of, of that. Obviously, <clears throat> when you look at our overall goals for the year, it's to win a championship. And I think that the three of us up here will all agree in that. But that being said, that's not going to happen today, tomorrow, you know, the next couple of weeks. What's going to happen is we're going to create a standard and, you know, strive for excellence. And that's what's going to help us get to that point. Um, so I think, you know, going off of what Sandy said, we are trying to win the day. We're trying to get better. We're trying to, you know, learn to play with each other really, really quickly. And it's crazy that it's been, you know, only a week of training camp. But, what, in a little little over a week and a half, we're, we're starting. Um, so we're just trying to get as ready as possible. And just off of that, Sabrina, for you, you know, th this is an offseason where a lot of the conversation is about players coming in. You know, this, and uh, we talked to Benajah a little bit about this, about what you guys have built. You know, how proud are you of what you have built here that has made this a destination for, you know, some of the best players in the world as well to be joining what you've built? Well, that's been the goal since I got drafted here, um, you know, was the understanding of having the backing of a front office and an organization that wants to bring a championship to New York City. And um, that's, you know, like Stewie said, doesn't happen overnight. You know, we started at the bottom and I've now worked our way into being this desirable team that two former MVPs want to come you know, be a part of and, and be a big part of in winning a championship. And so uh, very thankful for, you know, the commitment from the front office and the organization to be able to make that, um, you know, make that come to life. And now it's our job to, to go out there and perform and build chemistry and, and do what we can in the pursuit of doing that. Ben. Hey, I'm ben Pickman from The Athletic. Um, this one's for Stewie. Um, you know, you're on the WNBPA board, so this is a big picture question. Um, uh, you know, what impact do you think the, the latest CBA had on uh, the free, the, the revised free agency rules? Um, what impact did that have on your decision, on the general scope of the league, and I guess playing it forward, um, what would you want to yeah. see change going forward? Um, the new CBA had a lot to do with the player movement, especially this free agency. Um, because <clears throat> we were able to kind of limit the core. You know, a player can only get cored for, for two years, and then they can go to, to any other um, team that they want. They're officially a free agent. And I think that, you know, that's the, the part where, you know, in my first couple of years, I remember it was Crystal Langhorn, and she was the player that just kept getting cored and cored and cored and cored. And even if she wanted to stay, it's like she didn't have an option. And now players are having those those options to – um, move freely and, and have an opinion and create um, a broader fan base in, in multiple cities. Meredith? Hi, Meredith Cash from Insider. Stewie, another big picture one for you. Um, I know that you spent a lot of your free agency process preaching about um, the need for change on uh, charter flights. I'm curious now that the league has made a little bit of a change going into this season, what your thoughts are? Hmm. Uh, my thoughts are, a little bit of a change. well, I'll take the one charter, but I'll, I would like um, for it to be um, a thing that continually grows. You know, yes, it's one charter and then it's all of playoffs, I believe, um, <clears throat> but I think the, the whole thing behind it is, you know, we want to get to the point in the WNBA where it's, you know, our first response to a question is not a no, you know, it's a yes, maybe, or yes, and, um, and really trying to figure that out to where we can, we can have the freedom and flexibility to fly private and continue to make sure our bodies are rested and recovered because we want to be great on the court. And sometimes these, these places we're going don't all have direct flights or we don't all have great seats. Um, so it's just about a, a part of raising the needle, setting the standard, 
Um, so, you know, hopefully we'll have a little bit more than what we have now for next year. Hi, uh, this is a question for John Quell and also Brianna. Um, you both talked about New York being an attractive destination, not just for the basketball team that you were joining, but for the opportunities that would be available to you um, off the court. And I know it's early days, but I wanted to ask um, how those have materialized so far, um, maybe, maybe something specific about um, how that's come to life um, so far for you um, being in New York. Um, I would say one of the ways that it's materialized was um, like our media day and stuff that we had to do yesterday. I mean, I feel like that was the longest day I've ever been in the gym for something like that. Um, <laughs> and I was pretty tired at the end, but, you know, big picture is good for our team and it's good for the league to have the coverage and, um, you know, everything that we had yesterday. So I think that was one of the ways. Um, just being around the city, I, I think I feel the energy of the people, um, you know, wanting to get behind this team, um, being excited for the season. Um, and I just know that they're going to show up and, and, and be loud for us. And, you know, just all the other stuff that I've been able to do, obviously, like just not really marketability-wise, but like being able to go to Broadway shows and having an option to do things. So it's a big difference between Connecticut and, and New York, obviously. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's going to take some time for more things to materialize, but I can already, I can already see a level of professionalism um, and I guess like more attention with us being here in such a big market. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Brian Florenton from Nets Daily and the local W. I'm Sabrina. Your WNBA journey has been pretty interesting. In 2020, you dealt with the bubble. 21 and 22, you dealt with recovering from injuries and having to reestablish yourself on the fly. Now that you've had a healthy offseason without anything really getting in the way, just how rewarding and refreshing is it just to sort of be able to just hoop without anything being a distraction in a sense? Thank you for that question. Um, it's been it's been a blessing. Um, you know, I think as athletes, a lot of the times, um, especially if you haven't dealt with an injury, you, you can sometimes take the days for granted and, and take the practices and and um, you know all all the small things. And I think it's definitely put it into perspective for me being able to have my first healthy off season of being able to train from the day the season ended last year to to this point now and. Um, I'm very excited. It, it's been rewarding already, um, just being able to be in training camp from day one um, to now and continue to work on my game and, and be my best best self for this team and not having to deal with that obstacle. And so for me, it's a blessing. I, I couldn't be more thankful for the opportunity to um, be here and, and give it my all. Um, and I'm, I'm very excited for the season because I've worked really, really hard to uh, work on my game and finally have the opportunity to work on my game this off season. And so I know I will be a lot better. Thank you. And John Quell, in New York, it's going to be completely different than, than, than it was in Connecticut, just based off the city and location and things like that, but also in the talent around you, the space on the floor. Just how do you see your role, I guess, it's still, early, it's still super early, but how do you sort of see your role evolving with your new teammates as we get deeper and deeper into the season? Yeah, I'm just excited because I just know that there's going to be a lot of space on the court. Um, just people on the court uh, where they have to be respected at the three-point line, um, can score on multiple levels, um, and have just you know kind of solidified themselves as really good players in this league. So I'm, I just, I don't, I don't think my role is gonna change much in that sense. I'm just, I feel like the spacing and and the way that we play is obviously going to be different. Hi, um, right here, Jackie Powell with the next. JJ, first for you. Um, when Stewie and Sloot were introduced in, I think it was February, after you had your presser, something they emphasized was that, that they want to be additions to this roster rather than sort of taking over the team. I I'm curious how that is for you, how you manage that concept of being an addition. And also, in the early going of training camp, what is sort of your leadership role looked like? Um, well, I'll answer the latter first. I think in training camp has been, you know, just talking to a lot of the younger players and making sure that they understand what we're what we're trying to do. Obviously, I'm I'm learning too. This is a new. This is my first time playing for a new coach um, since I've been in the WNBA. So different terminology, but kind of saying a lot of the same things that I've heard before. But just trying to understand Sandy and Olaf and what they see out there and what they want us to to achieve on the court, and then understanding my teammates as well. So I, I would say all encompassing a little bit of everything. Um, and what was the first part again? I forgot already. <laughs> 
Oh, fitting into the team and being an addition. Um, I think it's a team sport, obviously. And so um, anybody that comes in is going to be an addition. Obviously, we all bring different things to the table. We can all do different things our own unique way. But it's about this team. And I've always been a team first player. I've always been a, a team first type of person. So that's not going to change with me coming here to New York. So all the same. Jeff. Hello. Uh, good to see you guys again. Uh, Jeff Magliacetti with All Knicks. Uh, Brianna, first of all, congrats on the uh, Puma deal renewal. Um, and I wanted to, uh, my question is for the newcomers, um, Brianna and John Quell. I wanted to ask about the uh, how, I know you guys haven't had much time actually on the floor yet, but you've been in the building, you've been around this team, you've been in camp. How has the Liberty kind of, uh, you know, emulated the hungry team that they were, the hungry, powerful team, feisty team that they were? that they were last year before your arrival, and how can you kind of build upon that with your own unique skill sets? Um, well, I think, you know, my first day here was probably Tuesday when I actually came into the building. Um, but just the energy, you know, you have, it's a, an, an interesting mix with, you know, a few returners, a lot of new players, a lot of rookies, you know, some vets, and then, Vets from, from a lot of different teams. So um, everybody's trying to put it together, really understand uh, the concepts behind this team. And the thing is, and, and Sab just touched on it, was, you know, coming into this market, you already know you have, like, a huge target on your back. But now, because everyone's talking about all these narratives and the biggest free agency and whatever, people want to beat us the moment we walk in the gym. And, and kind of embracing that and, and taking that forward and realizing that we're going to use this to our benefit. We have a very talented roster and now it's just about how we can play together and with the facilities and the staff and everyone around us everyone wants to be great so when you're surrounded by greatness it's a lot easier for you to be like all right I'm gonna be my best today I'm gonna come in I'm gonna get all the things I need so that I can be my best and leave it all out on the court yeah I don't have anything to add to that she, she, she said everything I needed to say so. we'll finish on zoom with Oren sorry Hi, Orin Weisfeld with The Guardian. Thanks. Uh, Brianna, this one's for you. You know, this franchise has made a lot of investments into, like, their performance team and, and facilities and amenities and stuff like that. And I'm wondering how important was that to you when you made your free agency decision, especially considering you're coming back from playing overseas? Yeah. Uh, very important. I think that, you know, when I, as a free agent, when I was looking at, at New York, you know, you realize that you have – an amazing front office, obviously with the ownership, they want to make sure that, you know, this team is getting everything that they need. And, you know, you realize that the moment that you walk in, you walk in and there's breakfast and then there's treatment and then there's the weight room and then there's the court and there's all these people around who are trying to help you. And the WNBA should have teams that have a one-stop shop. I shouldn't have to travel all over the place to get everything I need. And here in New York, you can get that um, right here. Uh, so to be able to come in and, and have that is is amazing because, you know, what I just touched on before is I want to be my best and I want to be able to, to do everything I can to to get that. And that means the resources. And here we have all the resources. Thanks. Uh, and then on a different topic, when you were in college, uh, the Minnesota Lynx were kind of dominating the league for most of that time. How did those teams shape you as a fan of the league? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I feel like when I was in college and, and even in the beginning, my first couple of years, um, the, the mini LA rivalry, um, uh, was something that it was just, it was intense, you know, that's, that's what I think of. And especially the, the players on, on both teams, the way that they had so much talent and they were able to play well together. I think that that's what I remember about those two, um, obviously the championships, but, you know, you want to, when you're a basketball player, you want to play with other great players. And um, it's it's easy to do that when you have people that you can, you know, look to and trust to your right and left. And I think that's what we're trying to build here.